Hi guys, this is section six. Uh, we are going to talk about OR. Um, so we continue our journey with making our language richer. So let's say you would like to say a, a sentence, uh, Richard is going to uh, visit Paris or uh, Bangkok. So with the current uh, parameters that we have in our language, we cannot write this uh, sentence. So we need the uh, new terminology, which is OR, and uh, we call it disjunction. So the symbol that we use for disjunction is this term, and it reads as uh, OR. All right. So for example, when you say P or Q, all right, so this statement is true, so we can easily write the truth table of this statement, P or Q. So um, for P or Q to be true, we don't really need both P and Q to be true. Um, so either P or Q can be true. In, in these cases, P or Q is going to be true true. So when P and Q through, well, then the P or Q is also true. When one of them is true, but the other one is false, uh, regardless, P or Q is going to be true. When one true, false, the other true, again, it's going to be true. Well, P or Q is going to be false only when both of those uh, atomic sentences uh, are false. Okay, so um, we have a couple of inference rules uh, specific to OR. Uh, the first one is uh, inference rule number six. Well, we're going to call it modus tollendo uh, ponens. Um, it's intuitively, uh, it is actually very intuitive. All right. Um, so these are shorter um, arguments valid arguments, and it basically says the following. If P or Q is true, well, then either P is true or Q is true. Well, how do we formally write this down as an argument? If P or Q is true and not P is true, what does that mean? That means P is false. So P or Q is true, but P is false. So then that means Q must be true. Okay, so symmetrically, if P or Q is true, but not Q is true, meaning Q is false, well, then that means for this to be true, one of them has to be true, so P must be true. All right, so we call this inference rule modus tollendo ponens. Well, then um, sort of probably easier, more even more intuitive uh, inference rule. Um, is, is when P is true, all right, P or Q is also true, or symmetrically, if Q is true, well, therefore, P or Q is also true, all right? So let's do an exercise. Oh, by the way, I forgot to write this. We call this rule addition, all right? So adding extra... Uh, atomic sentences to the true uh, statement, true sentence, is not going to change the truth value uh, of the final sentence. For that reason, we call it addition. So here is the uh, statement. Uh, premise number one is P or Q. Premise number two is not P. All right, so P must be false. And then the premise number three is not P implies, um, Q implies R. And therefore, R or S. Okay? So, this is premise number one. Let's number those so we can refer them later. This is premise number two. This is also premise. So I would like to reach to this uh, conclusion. For that reason, I'm going to note it 
somewhere here so that I don't forget it. Um, and I'm going to erase this part because I would like to continue my proof here. Okay, so what do I have? Well, first of all, I can use, I'm using direct proof, by the way. So I can use the first and the second statements, all right? And this is basically modus tollendo ponens, right? P or Q is true, not P is true, therefore Q must be true. So this is modus tollendo ponens, let's say, of the arguments one and two. Okay, and then what else? I remember in the conclusion, we would like to show that R or S uh, is true. So I need to get either R or S. I don't need to get both, either R or S. Then the proof will be done. But I just got Q only here. So, but once I have Q, what else do I know? Um, well, not really. But I can still use, again, the sentence two and three, right? Because not P implies Q implies R and not P. If you remember, this is a standard structure for modus ponens. So I'm going to get Q implies R. So this is modus ponens. Let me just briefly write it as MP between the arguments two and three. Very well. What else? Well, now I can use uh, the Q. So I have Q true. Q implies R true. Once again, I can employ the modus ponens rule. I must have R true. So modus ponens between the arguments four and five. So I am done because remember, I was aiming to get R or S, either one of them. Uh, there's no S, by the way, here. So therefore, I will never get S in, 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 in any of those lines. So I got R. So that means in line seven, I just add a statement S. Whether it's true or false doesn't matter, but R or S is going to be true. Well, this is just addition of line six. Okay, so this is how we prove an, an argument uh, using a disjunction.